Welcome to the Open to Hope show today. We're going to be talking about a holiday show today and about hope and healing. And my co-host today is Alan Peterson, Executive Director of the Compassionate Friends, and I'm Dr. Gloria Horsley. And welcome to the show, Alan. It's great to have well, you as a co-host. Thank you. That is our first duet together, by the way. Probably our last, <laughs> but it was a lot of fun. It was. We're, uh, we're in the holiday spirit. And That's right. It, it feels good to be able to uh, recognize holidays. We know they're painful for a lot of people, but, yeah. but you know, we want everybody. The hope is that everybody can embrace at least part of the holidays or learn to celebrate maybe in different ways. Yeah. And that's what our show's about today. Absolutely. We're going to give you some great tips for the holidays and finding hope. We're going to talk to you about what to expect the first, second, and third, and fourth year, those early years for you or that are wondering how you're going to get through it this year. And then we're going to give you some survival tips. And we're also going to talk about some brain-changing self-care things that you can do for yourself this year. Yeah. I mean, you know, we, you and I, I don't know how many shows we've done. Every year we do shows on the holidays, mm -hmm. radio programs, television programs, and webinars. And there seems to be a common thing, Gloria, that people, especially in that first year, yep. you know, their anticipation and the anxiety of, gosh, how am I going to possibly have Christmas without my my child, my, my grandchild, my sibling, my mom, my dad, and, and we try to offer common sense stuff, but just, you know, some of the more common things that we say is, you know, don't set your expectations too high. Yeah. Uh, well, Alan, I, you know, that first year for the folks that are watching that are first year into yeah. it, I always say the first year you just got to get through it. Yeah. I mean, it's a stepping thing, you know, it, it's a tough year and, you know. Y you breathe your way through it. I, I think the same uh, basic tenets that work in grief, you know, we all grieve uniquely, so mm -hmm. we all do the holidays uniquely. Some people want to keep things the same way, and they find comfort in that. Some people find more comfort in changing everything. Mm -hmm. But you're, you're right, it's a unique situation. But uh, we have a couple of guests today whose perspective is different, their sit grief situation is different, that are also going to share some insights. So hopefully people will get something out of it to help them. Right. Uh, you know, to, to, and, and to find time in the holidays, Gloria. To, to smile, even if it's difficult, but to find precious memories to wrap our, ourselves right. in like a blanket. That's Absolutely. important. Absolutely. And as I said, we're going to give you some tips and thoughts and ideas. Yeah. We'll introduce our guests because one of them is very special to uh, you. That's, that's right. The other one's a special friend. But That's right. Well, our guests today are uh, Dale Dulabon, and uh, he is little Dale's dad. Mm -hmm. And uh, he has quite a story to, 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 to tell, and, and, and Dale and, and his wife, Debbie, their only son, uh, little Dale, died. And so their perspective on the holidays is certainly going to be different. And then our second guest today is my wife, Denise, and uh, she is uh, Sean Patrick Sullivan's mom. And uh, she's got a story to tell. She turned her grief into making beautiful crafts. And so we're going to look at some crafts mm -hmm. later, and we're just going to have a, a good conversation and end up singing a little song about Christmas. So. Absolutely. And you've kind of written a song for the show to end, go out with, Picking right? Picking a little fun at Christmas, having a little fun with it. So, All right. Uh, like yeah. we did with our jingle bells. That's exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, well, Dale, welcome to the show. And Denise, it's yeah. great Hi. to have you guys on today. Thanks. Thanks. Great to be here. And thank you so much for coming to talk about the holidays. Well, Dale, let's talk about you a little bit. I think we got a picture of little Dale that they're going to bring up and uh, talk a little bit about your uh, a parent with no living children, right. which uh, is kind of interesting. We were talking about on the uh, yesterday, we were chatting with you about the fact that the way you do with the holidays is that you don't do a lot yourself, but then you go over to your relatives, right? It is a little bit different. I think for all of us, we have a similar pain from losing our child or a brother or sister, but it's a little different because for many of us, uh, or many of you, you have other children, maybe grandchildren, and you want to kind of uphold those traditions. And when you have had only one child and you lose that child, then obviously your house is kind of empty and dark and cold and you've got to figure out what to do with that. Now that's not only the holiday time, but really all of our time. I always say to people, 
I'm an unemployed dad. Mm. That doesn't yeah. mean I don't have I like a, a job every day with, with a paycheck, but it does mean as a father, I'm not being actively employed. So, mm -hmm. again, it makes it unique and different the holiday time as well. Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, Dale, your, your life is interesting. Uh, a little Dale died in 1996. Nin 1998. 1998. Mm -hmm. And now, today, you know, you're out speaking to other groups. And I know just last week you spoke to a group about handling the holidays. Right. And I think um, in our pre interview, you talked a little bit kind of like, you know, you're the manager of your holiday season to choose what works for you. But what are some of the things that uh, in, in your work with other people that you find help them get through the holidays? Some of the basic tips and tricks, you might say, that you would advise people to do. Well, to, to pick up on something you said early on tonight in today, today's show, you mentioned that, you know, managing expectations. And, and Gloria, you talked about, you know, surviving. So I think that really enduring the, those that first holiday season is right. important. So. You know, if you don't feel obligated, I've got to be happy and like all my coworkers and so forth and so on. It, it, it could be real. And people, you could, people say, you know, happy holidays or how are you dealing with it? You know, it's kind of tough. We're having mm -hmm. a tough time. Right. So I get honest and open about it. I think some of the traditions, maybe they're hard to keep up. So you don't have to do all of them. Um, you can leave some of them behind. You can kind of engage in some escapism. You know, go, go right. see a movie, take a quick trip, do something different if it helps you. On the other hand, if it does help you to maybe stay connected and, and go to that same place and do that same thing that we always did with our daughter or our son, then do that too. But but you can change your mind. There's no obligation. Be right. flexible and be easy on yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, you're, you're talking about that, and I my kind of head's ringing with my daughter Heidi, who often does the show with me, and and she's a bereaved sibling, and she's like, wow, but what about me? You you don't have other children, so uh, you know you can decide to do that. But she's like, what about me? And Denise, you had a what about me story yesterday, yeah. and I can you talk about your the loss of your son, and then and then what how your daughter responded, Sean died, he was 21, and my daughter was 17. They were inseparable, and I was a single mom, so it was just the three of us, and he died in September. So when Christmas came around, I just said, I can't do this. It's just me and her, and she was so sweet, and it always makes me cry when I think about it, but she looked at me and she goes, I'm still here, Mom, and she was so sweet. It chokes me up, but I thought, doggone it, I have to pull myself together. I have to do this for Dana, which kind of got me over the hump and I went out and I bought all pink everything and made this beautiful pink Christmas tree for her. And I thought, I can't let Sean's death destroy my life and my daughter's life. So I kind of faked so it So that was kind I of a turning it. point for you yes. in making, yeah. making that decision about yeah. the Christmas, the holidays for you. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. What, what did you do the first holiday, Ellen? Well, uh, <laughs> the first <laughs> holiday I don't, really remember what I did. I, I don't even think I got out of bed. Uh, I tell people, and it sounds bizarre, but the second Christmas, uh, my daughter Ashley died in uh, August, and so the second Christmas, I didn't really know what to do. I lived in Colorado at that time, and um, I wasn't going to have my boys until Christmas night, so I went to a casino. I drove <laughs> an hour to a casino, and escapism, like you said so well, Dale. And I, you know, there's something to be said for that. It works for some people. But I walked into the casino and and I went to play a slot machine and I just stopped and literally got sick to my stomach. I thought, what am I doing? I'm just. And I got in my car and drove an hour back home and, yeah. you know, I well, hit out. And yeah. I, the first Christmas, uh, uh, I had uh, Denise. We wanted to show a picture of your son too, mm -hmm. on on the show. Right. But uh, talk, talk a little bit about him missing, too. That was pretty incredible. Um, well, he went out on a Saturday night. And the next morning, I expected him to be in his room when he came home. And um, he didn't come home. And once in a while, he would spend the night on his girlfriend's couch with her mom and you know, at the family's house. Anyway, he didn't come home. And so I felt kind of, kind of dumb, but I called the police. He's 21 years old, and he doesn't come home one night. But I knew something was wrong. So we searched and searched for nine days and hired all kinds of people to come and helicopters and we finally found him on the side of the road. Oh, wow. And so I think I had so much hope that we would find him alive. My, I was in such shock because you have hope until the very last minute. Right. And then there's no hope left and we have to go on to the, yeah. you know. Yeah. And to, onto that holiday. Onto, yeah. Well, I was saying that the first holiday for me, I was teaching at the University of Rochester, and right. I actually was an expert 
quote in grief and loss and work on a surgical service. So I knew that the literature showed that you should stay home that first year mm -hmm. and go through the regular pattern. That was the advice. Right. So we trucked through it. Now, is that right or wrong? I, I don't know. It's hard to say. I will say one thing that's positive about it. You get all the ornaments out and all that stuff and, you, and you've done it. Right. You know, right. but because that second year is tough too. Because in the second year, for people yeah. there, the first year they say you're grieving for your child or your spouse or your sister or brother or whatever, and the next year uh, you're grieving for what you, for yourself. This is going to be my life. Right. And so it can be tough. That that second year creeps up on you, and you mm -hmm. think you've done it, or that third year, whatever you think I've gotten through, but it takes time. You know, I also think you know one of the the best pieces of advice that we give people and what people report back to us and between us here we've worked with thousands of grieving people uh, is that reaching out and helping others uh, is so helpful and beneficial and you know mm -hmm. Denise you hey now wait a minute oh. I gotta say something about that reaching yeah. out and helping others but how about accepting help yourself that's right. both I think they're both is that, isn't that for all yeah. of us a hard, it's hard to thing accept. because yeah. you feel like you know your people feel so sorry for you you know nobody's yeah. supposed to feel sorry for me yes you know or or whatever just learning to accept help I, graciously can be hard I, and I think that mm -hmm. and I think some people will do reach out and help others and forget to get help themselves mm -hmm. but Denise early on in your grief you started doing something which I found amazing when I met you and I think is amazing today but you started almost immediately reaching out to other bereaved yeah. families and tell people a little bit what you did and how that impacted you in your grief um, well because my story was in the media a lot of you know people would reach out to me in the beginning and say hey my friend just lost somebody can you reach out to them so I started making baskets and I sometimes spend a lot of money on them but you know I put books and I started making crafts and I'd make a little necklace with the child's name on it and it from there just people would start asking me can you make a basket can you make a candle can you make a gift and then I had my group and I started every month bringing a little gift to all these people and to see the look on their face when they receive something with their child's name on it I got such a blessing out of being a blessing to them and hey, it just kept growing. Let's take this time to look at some of the crafts you've made. I okay, I made you a few things. Oh my gosh, how exciting. All right, so, well, Alan wrote a song called Tonight I Hold This Candle, right. and one of the, the lyrics is, this candle says I love you. Uh, so I put that on the side, and I put Scott's name on the other oh side. Oh my gosh, how fabulous. So that's so got my son that, Scott's name right there, and this candle says I love you. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. Thank so. you so much. And then I started that's making be really mugs because I thought I liked having coffee with Sean in the morning. So uh, Alan wrote a song called Love Lives On and I put Sean's name on it and I made one for Ashley. It says, so yeah, love, lives so love lives on. The love for Scott never has, and has I, never I think died. what's awesome Fabulous. about this, this kind of stuff is that people, it lets you, you know, have that, your child's name there in front of you all the time. Right. I think there's a real importance for people making That's a lot so of people sweet. make crafts uh, their own and and you know you used to do it and now you've elevated it to a place where they're yeah. really professional but I, I love it Scott it's so yes. love it's, it's just so a little sweet. crumb but as parents that have I lost our it. child it's a little crumb that absolutely you get to have and I love the candles Scott. because there's so, nothing like lighting those candles no. right so I've perfected this new thing and I'm going to I'm going to just show you this real quick this so we one, don't take this too one much people time. can do at home no. Oh. You want to do that? Oh, no, first? Go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so I have now learned a special technique. It took me a long time, but I went behind your back. Uh oh. And this is your first gift from all of your children. Oh my gosh. With all oh. of their signatures. All their signatures. <laughs> oh, that is so sweet. Oh my gosh. That's all my children. All the children. And, and with you Scott's know, signature. Uh, that really blew my mind because Alan asked me uh, a f about a, two weeks ago if I had a signature of Scott, my son who was killed at 17, and I had to dig back. Well, fortunately, my husband is a good scrapper, and so he did some scrapbooks, and I had to find Scott's driver's yeah. license, mm -hmm. and that Oops. was a signature, so and I never thought... she could take it from a driver's license, a piece of paper, and... Uh, have it and then put it on anything. Oh, so. that is fabulous. So Thank you. Oh my gosh, oh, that's really on. precious. Okay, this, I know you're not a, uh, your house is not full of little knickknacks, but 
There's his full signature oh, there's on a Mac. Mac. On a Mac. So I took that off his driver's license and made How that for you. fabulous with his driver's license. You know, it's so funny. It's been so many years, but my heart just skipped a beat it when does. I found it, his driver's license and looked at his signature, something I absolutely never, ever I thought of. I think it's of. a little different to see their name than yeah. to see he actually wrote that. And I thought, you know, I know. it's a little piece oh. of... Show the so, surprise okay, to so this, this is the grand for, finale. This is for Phil, but okay. he unfortunately like is not here. But this is something people can do at home, and I thought I'd give. So this is really simple and easy. Oh my gosh, there we go. I took crayons, and I put it inside of a glass ball, and you heat the crayons. So I picked green and white because Scott loved the Jets. The Jets. So you put crayons, and I melted it with a blow dryer. I made a little decal. This is for Phil to put on the tree. Oh, he loves his God ornament. The New York so Jets. That New York Jets. He has an ornament that he uh, that Scott made. So now he'll have another one. That's it. Anyway, How that's fabulous. what I do, and it's it's a blessing to me to be able to kind of bring to life, you know. Our children. That is so fantastic, Denise. I love it. Well, let's talk a little bit about some brain changing things because I promised we'd do some brain yeah. changing things. So I just want to tell you some. There's some research that actually shows that you can do some physical things if you're feeling really low during the holidays and you have to get up and go, you know, do something or go to a party or whatever. First of all, now this seems pretty simple, yeah. but it's been shown that if you express gratitude, it actually changes your brain chemistry. Yeah. Even though you may not be feeling it, you wake up in the morning and express gratitude. And let's talk about something. I mean, I get simple. What are you grateful for, Alan? I'm grateful that I have the compassionate friends in my life who understand my journey. And when I'm struggling, they know that I'm not crazy, that I am grieving. Mm -hmm. So you're grateful for understanding no people? Understanding people. Dale, how great about you? Friends. What are you grateful for? Well, I'm grateful for uh, the same, the friends, the compassionate friends. But I would put it like this, Alan. You say, I'm sorry, did you say, they know I'm not crazy, I'm just grieving? Right. That may be right, but you could also say, they think I'm crazy too, like that. <laughs> so it makes me feel good. But, but on a more serious note, I'm just very grateful for the, the chance to have had an experience of fatherhood, to have been a father, to wow. still, I still feel that I'm a father, to have this little boy come in my life and just turn me into a vastly better person. And just because he died, that doesn't that hasn't been taken away from me. Wow. So I'm very grateful for his life. Very, I very love much. that. You're grateful for too. him. How about you, Denise? I think the biggest thing I'm grateful for is the friends that I've made mm -hmm. since Sean died. You know, and, and my attitude, I've become a way more relaxed person. I'm mm -hmm. not so uptight. And I just try to enjoy every day. All right. OK, now. We're sitting there thinking, it's our first year, hey, I'm grateful that I can open my eyes in the morning right. and see. Right. Yes. I am grateful that I can put my foot out of the bed, that yeah. I can stand, mm -hmm. that maybe I can match my socks. Yeah. Right. Maybe. Maybe I can get out of my 45-minute shower. Mm -hmm. Those are big accomplishments yeah. early in grief. Yeah. 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 They are. They are. So there are going to be people during the holidays that are going to be disappointed in you. Right. 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 Let's ask them, why are they going to be disappointed in us, Dale? Well, they, they want the best for us, and they want to see us kind of getting better. And they have, many of people don't understand that, that the grief experience that we're going through is unique and different from their grief. They may recall when their uncle or other friend died, and they you know, it's been a few weeks since the funeral, can you bounce back? And so now it's the holidays. You should kind of get with it. We want to right. see you be happy. They want the best for us. They're not quite aware that we have a deeper thing we need to deal with. Yeah. That's yeah. a challenge. Yeah. Can I follow that up? Because not only you've done a lot in the, for the Compassionate Friends, you're a chapter leader, but how important is support? Because when other people don't get it, how important is it to have support from people who do understand uh, what you're going through? Uh, being on words critically important. We have friends and family around us and coworkers, right. and they want to help, and, and, and they're wonderful, and we appreciate them trying to help, but they don't fully get it. We don't want them to fully get it, really, right? But but when you walk into a room of people like us, the compassionate friends, somebody you've never met right. gives you a look or, or some body language, and you, and you know they get it. Mm -hmm. And you're not even there 60 seconds talking about your situation, and immediately, immediately, you feel you feel the credo of our group, right? Mm -hmm. We need not walk alone. Yep. I mean, you feel that sense of community. Yeah. So let's talk about another thing, because I, I like some things that people can do. Express gratitude, 
you know, just opening your eyes, stepping out of bed, whatever that you can smell, you can think, I don't know, whatever right. smallest thing you can mm -hmm. find, start with that. Just one little yeah. thing. Just do your, open your eyes for a week and, and stop and think that you're grateful for it. Now, another, another one I want to talk about is to hug and be hugged. That is so important, and we find that physical your brain can actually produce endorphins by hugs, touching animals, mm -hmm. hugging kids, or hugging a friend, or put your hand, shake hands. 30 seconds of shaking your hands actually changes some body chemistry they've shown wow. in the brain and produces endorphins. Mm -hmm. And here's another thing, hug yourself. Why do you think babies, let's see you guys, hug, mm -hmm. why do you think babies do this and rock? Because it, they don't have jobs. Because it <laughs> <very, laughs> it's very calming. So that's another thing you, hmm. you can do for yourself during the holidays. It will actually give you some brain changes. So right. if you're feeling stressed and upset, go up in your room and do give yourself a hug. Or, um, you know, think of one thing you're grateful for. Another thing you can do if you've got low energy during the holidays is take it. Come on, guys. Snapping. Snapping 40 times and you have to do the left and the right at the same time. It actually, research shows, it changes your brain chem chemistry and energy to do that. <laughs> Changed his, he's laughing. <laughs> <laughs> he's already laughing. Being and that's ridiculous. another one. <laughs> Being ridiculous alone can make you lose Change a little because I'm counting to 40 and I lost track. <laughs> <laughs> and here's another thing that'll change your energy. Just raising your hands above your head, yeah. period. You don't even have to do anything. Raising yeah. your hands and hold, holding them up there, Alan. Yep, and holding them up there will actually change your en energy. And I would suggest to you that if you feel like you need an energy change when you're sitting at di uh, a dinner or whatever, please tell your hosts that if you take a moment and leave, that please don't come and get me. Let me mm -hmm. have a moment. I'll be back. You don't right. need to worry about right. me. Yeah. And another thing is make sure you've got transportation, right? Right. Yeah. Do you uh, want to be stuck? Yeah. Exit plan. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. you don't want to be stuck at the at the party and not and not be able to leave. And, and I, I think, uh, and you guys I'm sure will agree, but you know, people invite you to a lot of events and you know, you don't know on Tuesday how you're gonna feel a week from Friday when that dinner party rolls around. I like to tell people, you know, we can still be courteous. So if, if they need an RSVP because they're gonna order me a catered dinner, I, you know, I would say, you know, look, I'd like to be there and I may be in, in good enough shape mm -hmm. to get there, but I'll give you a definite maybe. It. I'll give you a right. definite maybe, but don't count on me. And don't you guys agree that that being open and yeah. honest? I do agree. I think it's important. I think we're all trained to be polite and follow the real etiquette of society. But I think if you're honest and say, you know what, we're going through a tough time right now. We love to be there, like you said, a week from Friday. We're not sure we can commit to it. If you need right. to, like you said, need to order food or something, count us out. We'll try to stop by and say hi, maybe for a dessert or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Try to tell people as early as you can, right. though. Right. Because right. Sure, of course. And, and you know what? There are going to be people who are going to be mad. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I've made some of my relatives angry because we didn't attend an event. Right. We didn't go to a wedding. Uh, two weeks after Scott died, and we just couldn't go. Well, people you know? believe, I mean, I, I, Ashley died in August, and the first Halloween, you know, Halloween was a big thing for us, and I always dressed up in ridiculous costumes, and I remember people saying, and they meant well, like you said, Dale, you know, the best thing for you, Alan, would be to, you know, to dress up like a turkey. <laughs> well, I just didn't, two months into my grief, that just didn't resonate with me, and, uh, and I did not do it. Yeah. But, you know, they didn't like it, but, you know, we, ha we have to know what we can handle or trust our instincts yep. about what you can handle. Here's another brain-changing thing which really uh, surprises you. Did you know that if you smile, even though you don't feel like smiling, if you move your mouth up into that smiling position, your mind really thinks that you're happy. Yeah. And mm -hmm. you can actually take a pen or a straw and put it in your mouth, and it will cause some brain changes in chemistry. Hmm. So try to smile even though you don't feel happy. And you're going to sing us uh, a song. With, Are we there? We're yeah, down to the, we're, we're down almost to there, but wait a minute. Oh. we got to close the show first. Oh, yeah. And then we're going to have you sing, and you've written kind of a fun song well, for us, I right? Well, I did. I had a little fun at the holidays expenses, so we're going to okay, sing Okay, wait a minute out. now. Yeah, I've got to okay. close the show okay. first, because right. Alan's going to sing his way out, right? Okay, I think we are, yes. <laughs> so we want to thank you for watching our show today, and we all all want to thank our guests today and we want to wish you a peaceful restful we do. whatever kind of holiday you can have and for some people we just hope you get through it right yeah. guys right. Yep. just breathe gentle yeah. and we want you to know yeah gentle and we want you to know we've been there yeah. we've been there we've made it yeah. and you, still and take yeah. a look there and let's let's all say together you'll make it too you'll make you'll it make too. it too
and have a peaceful holiday. And thanks for watching. All right, so I just made this song up in the last day or so, but I want to have a little fun with the holidays, how we all kind of get caught up in it. So here we go. You ready? Okay. Well, it starts each year at Thanksgiving. It doesn't end till New Year's Day. When we sink in deep depression, when we learn how much we weigh. <laughs> All those cookies, cakes, and parties, well, they've taken their toll. And we really don't remember just when we lost all self-control. Grandma makes the gravy, Uncle Joe stuffs the bird. Someone spikes the eggnog until Grandpa's words get slurred. <laughs> we do it in the name of peace on earth and everybody talks about goodwill. Till our coronary come January when we get the credit card bill. You've been there, haven't you, huh? <laughs> All right, so this is what we do next. So we make our resolutions, put them on a list. All the really good and fun things that we're going to resist. We're going to make some real big changes. We're going to lose it pound by pound. And we have such good intentions until next year comes around. <laughs> and Grandma makes the gravy and Uncle Joe stuffs the bird. We all sit and talk for hours, telling stories we've already heard. We do it in the name of peace on earth, and everybody talks about goodwill. Till our coronary come January, when we get the credit card bill. Right? right. Well, jingle bell time, it's a swell time, it's true. Happy holidays to you. And then I needed a big finish, so here's my big finish, all right? Peace on earth, may all spirits be lifted. I just hope my cousin doesn't know the gift I gave him was regifted. <laughs> <laughs> Well, jingle bell time, it's a swell time, it's true. Will you sing it out with me? Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays to you. There you go. Let's go out with it again. <laughs> Is that it? Or we want to sing it again? Let's sing it again. Jingle bell time, it's a swell time, it's true. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays to jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Hey, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Well, we're having some fun singing some songs. And, um, you know, I think singing's important, too.